Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Glenn Roberts, a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology and microbiology at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in the Division of Clinical Microbiology. This is part two of a three-part series focusing on melanized fungi in which Dr. Roberts describes the characteristics of melanized fungi and the steps necessary to identify the specific fungi present. Part two focuses on the rapidly growing fungi. This presentation will deal with the identification of melanized or demediaceous fungi and will continue on with rapidly growing fungi. Now just to recap what the melanized or demediaceous fungi are, they are the, the organisms that have high concentrations of melanin or melanin-like compounds in their cell wall, causing them to be pigmented. Sometimes the pigmentation is very slight and it's kind of hard to see. Most of the time it's uh, dusky brown, dark brown, even to black in the hyphae and maybe even in the conidial cell walls. There are two distinct groups, the ones that grow slowly and the ones that grow very rapidly. I mean, there's a good distinction between those. You can look at the cultures and tell that versus time. Canidia vary in their appearance from single cell to multi cell. And some of them, this is a kind of something that people have a little difficulty with. Some of these organisms may have melanized and hyaline or not pigmented hyphae in the same mount and they consider these to be hyaline moles rather than pigmented moles if both kinds are there. So that's something to keep in your mind. We examine these fungi as to quickly look at the hyphae, look at the growth as if it's pigmented and it's pretty obvious you can see the dark pigmentation on them if it's there. You determine if it's slow growing or rapid growing and then you look underneath the microscope to find the spores and the connected way the spores are produced. Uh, it's very important. You can tell that by looking at the amount of the thing. And you may have to perform a few ancillary tests with some of these to be able to definitively identify them. And more importantly, uh, when you recover one of these organisms, you need to correlate that with the type of specimen that's sent in and that it came from, and then the clinical scenario and the histopathology if you can have access to it. So we are going to look at a group of fungi that produce, that are multicellular. They don't have just single cells. They are cells that are multicellular, canidia, they have transverse and longitudinal septations within them. And you can see on the right hand side where the arrow is, there are septations within that pigmented cell. They go both directions. And so th what we're talking about here, and one to the left of that cell, at 9 o'clock, you'll see both horizontal and longitudinal septations within that spore or that conidium. This is what we're going to talk about in this group. There are some that are probably very uh, familiar to you. Alternaria is the one. That is a very common organism, as you see in the clinical lab every day. It's an allergen. It rarely causes disease in patients, but every once in a while it can do that. Any of these are, are capable of causing disease, but most of the time they're just environmental organisms. Epicoccum is another that we'll talk about. Pithomyces, Eutocladium, and Stemphilium. And people get a little bit confused when you start talking about this group. But I think if you look at the way the spores are produced, and you know that they produce horizontal and longitudinal septations, you have to then concentrate on how they are produced. That tells you what the organism is. Now with alternaria, this one is, is a fairly easy one. This is one you can recognize, probably all of you can recognize just by sight. It is an organism that produces chains of pale brown, kind of club-shaped conidia that are in long chains. And they have horizontal and longitudinal septations. The, the spore has a long beak on it and it's a distal end. And my friend Dr. Elmer Koneman kind of says that he thinks this organism looks like the thing you get in the, in the grocery store that's called a drumstick <laughs> full of ice cream. You'll look at that in a few minutes and just here be able to maybe see that. Here's a culture that is that has some pigmentation to it. And now the underneath the microscope, you're looking at the spores. These are the canidia and they have horizontal and longitudinal septations. The one in the center that is enlarged at the right shows you that it has both types of septations. And their beak is at the top end of it, about maybe at 1 o'clock of the enlarged view. And you notice that some of these are very dark. You can't even see those septations in them. This organism produces the same kind of canidia, but they look different depending upon the isolate sometimes. And actually, they don't stain well enough because there's so much melanin 
in the cells of these that they're so dark which is very difficult to tell what they are there are times when we look at one like this where their cells are just have brown pigment that is not over it's so dark and you can see the long beak on these and you can see that the septations are horizontal and uh, longitudinal but it's hard to tell it except on the the lower chain on the left hand side the last cell you can see the longitudinal horizontal septations you have to look at all the slide to be able to find these probably and so examine every film that you can this next slide shows you alternaria and there's some of them being into chain and here it is a little bit more difficult to tell if there are both kinds of septations in there so what you would end up doing is looking around at the whole slide to see what the predominant presentation of these canidae would be and I would bet that you would find areas where you see horizontal and longitudinal septations. These are probably young canidae. And here on this one, a little difficult to tell. This is sometimes difficult whenever these things get overstained with the lactophenol and the blue. But on the top cell, I think if you can see uh, the, uh, the horizontal and longitudinal septations. Now on this one, Basically, we see mostly just uh, the horizontal septations, but if you look at the one at the far left, at the upper left corner, you notice that there's a, a vertical area there, and so that is the longitudinal septation. So they're not always so obvious. You can look at the morphology. You can see the things that have a beak. Then at the right side, uh, about 3 o'clock, you notice that there are three in a chain, and you don't see the long beak. This organism has different morphologic features. There's a, a book that is uh, written on the demediaceous or pigmented fungi, and Alternaria has many different types of presentations for Canidia. So they don't all look like we tell you. Here you can see this one there. Uh, you can see the long chain in the center here, and you need to look carefully to look and see if you see the horizontal longitudinal septations, but they're in there. And you can notice there's a little dark area where they're connected together with the beak. And then here's one you actually can see what Dr. Conerman was talking about. It looks like a drumstick with ice cream in it, but it does have the horizontal longitudinal septations. Sometimes these cells are, are rough walled, and most of the time they're smooth. Sometimes they're very elongated, like you see here. And then that's why I say the morphology varies a lot because they don't all look exactly the same. But if you look at the features, you'll be able to tell. So alternaria is a very common one to see in the clinical laboratory, and probably most of you can recognize it by sight. But you'll encounter some of those ones sometimes that'll be a real challenge to you because they don't look quite the same. This is a peacockum that you may or may not be familiar with. It produces canidophores that are short and not well differentiated from the hyphae. And the canidia are grouped together, form kind of like a nest where the canidia can be produced. And all the canidia fours are grouped together right in one spot, and they form this structure called a sporodochium. This is a totally different thing. The canidia are brown, they're rough walled, they have horizontal and longitudinal septations, because that's the group that we're in. And as they get older, they get kind of crusty looking, and then you can't see that very well. So we're going to look at that. One of the hallmarks of this organism is that it produces an orange diffusible pigment. And if you turn it over on the back side and take a look at it, you can see it pretty well. But the culture is dark, kind of uh, brownish colored. And there you see all these things, whatever they are, sitting there all clumped together. Well, that's called a sporodochium. That's where they're all uh, canidophores are together and all the canidia are produced in the same area. If you look at the large one on the left hand side you can see the horizontal longitude of septations. Maybe it's a little bit more oblique for what rather than longitude. But this is Epicoccum. Epicoccum is an environmental organism. I don't know that it's ever caused human disease. And here you see an early growth of Epicoccum. There's where you see all the canidia are being produced in there side by side. And after a little bit, they'll form more and more, and they'll just be all grouped together. But if you look at the canidia themselves, and you can't see it in the young ones, there'll be horizontal and longitudinal septations. And they may even look like this. Sometimes they get dark brown and crusty looking, rough wall like that. But you still can look and see that they have the septations. And then you look to see how they're produced. And now you look at the old ones. These are the ones that are very mature. You can't tell much about it because they've all clumped together and they've gotten kind of crusty looking, but if you see a whole cluster of these, 
in this four dokum you're going to know that you're dealing with epicocum in addition to looking for that orange diffusible pigment. The next one is one called pithomyces. In this situation we're looking at canidia that kind of come right off the hyphae. They're not well differentiated from the hyphae. There's no real structure there to show you that they're produced by something. They're produced along the sides of the canidia. The canidia have horizontal longitudinal septations because that's what we're the group that we're in. They're kind of elliptical, maybe club shaped, maybe uh, kind of pear shaped. They may be smooth to rough and they're produced singly. So here's the culture. You can tell that it has some dark pigment to it. And there are the canidia. And you notice in the center there's one that's attached to the hyphal strand, but there's no real structure underneath it to make to show you how it's produced. It's produced right from that hyphal strand. There are canidia sitting around there, and you look on the top of some of them, and you see the horizontal and longitudinal septations. So you're looking at canidia that are not produced on any kind of a structure, just along the sides of the hyphae. They're produced singly, and they do have the two types of striations, the longitudinal and, and horizontal. The next one is eutocladium. This is one that produces dark brown canidia with a horizontal and longitudinal septations. We're going to have to learn a couple of new words here now. The canidia are produced sympodially, which means they're produced on one side and the other of a canidiophore. And the canidiophore, as it grows, begins to bend to one side or the other. And the canidia are produced on those bends. The canidiophore, when it does that, is called a geniculate canidiophore. It's like a series of bent knees. The canidia may be smooth or rough, and you may even see some secondary canidia or sort of beak on these. But here's the culture, and you see the dark pigment in the center. And this is what it looks like underneath the microscope. You see the rough wall nature of this thing, but you can't really tell in a young culture exactly if it's pigmented or not. So you're going to have to wait until it matures. Then you're going to have to look around the whole culture, the whole organism, for the, the whole slide. Here you see eutocladium, and if you look on the right-hand side, there is a piece of hyphae. Notice that these come off one side and then the other. Well, basically what's happened is, if you look really closely, you'll notice that the canidia four, which looks like a piece of hyphae, is kind of turned to the left and then it goes up and it's going to be turned to the right. That's a geniculate canidia four, the beginning of one. Let's look at the next slide, and there you can see even more. You can see that that canidia four is actually sitting there at the top, and it's going, it, it kind of twists and turns a little bit. Look on the bottom. This canidia four twists and turns, and the canidia are produced on one side and then the other. And that's uh, it's called sympodial production. It's a little bit difficult sometimes to tell you. You're going to have to look at some of these a uh, few times to be able to see what they look like. Stemphilium uh, will show you again in just a second here what a geniculate canidia four is, because there's a good one in here, I think. I may be wrong. It may be one of the others that we're going to cover, but we'll look and see. The canidiophores are brown or single or slightly branched. The canidiophores are swollen at the top, and the canidia are single, dark brown, smooth to rough, and they have horizontal and longitudinal septations. And you're not going to see that canidiophore I talked about. What you're going to see here, someone described this to me one time. They said it looks like a bale of hay on a long stalk. I don't know that I understand that. But there you see a canidium, the big spore has horizontal longitudinal septations that are very obvious and if you look at the one at the left hand side bottom you'll see that it's resting on top of a canidia four that is swollen. It's swollen at the very top of the tip. So that is a stemphilium. So now we're going to talk about canidia that have perpendicular septations, no longitudinal ones, and the canidia are multicelled. And there's a group of these here that we'll talk about, Bipolaris, Dreschlera, Curvularia, Exerohylum, and Helminthosporium. The first one's Bipolaris. Bipolaris is one that is the most common uh, one that you'll see in the laboratory of this group, pretty much. It produces large, oval, brown, pigmented, multi-septate canidia. So it has many segments to it. This is where you'll see what a geniculate canidia 4 looks like. It produces canidia fours that twist and turn, and on each side of that twist and turn is produced a canidium. So that sympodial canidial production that we talked about before, you'll see a good example here. Canidia produce up to six septi, so there's long canidia with all these sections. 
and the way you confirm the organism is you put it in some distilled water and let it sit for a long time, for like 24 hours, and then you look at it to see if it's germinated. And if it's germinated, it will be germination at either end. It's called bipolar germination. So at each end, it would be polar. And then the germ tube, as I'll show you in a minute, grows parallel to the longitudinal axis of the spore. So let's look. This is a, a, a good example of bipolaris. On the right-hand side is that twisted and turned canidia for I talked about. The canidia are produced everywhere at twist and turn on one side and then the other, and that's called sympodial canidia production. If you look at the right-hand side where the arrow is, you can see that that's happened. And there are the canidia, and there's a dark area where they are connected. And that dark area is called a hilum, and that becomes important to look at. I'll show you why. The hilum does not protrude. It just is uh, kind of sits at the top of like a bowl of, kind of down in that canidium. Down at the bottom is a good example of a twisted and turned one, which is a large on the right-hand side. And you can see it on the middle of the, down to the bottom of the area of that area. You can see the canidium, and on the left-hand side, you see the dark area where it's been attached. And that does not protrude. It's kind of continuous with the wall of the cell. This is another one with the bipolaris. And notice that the spores are produced on one side and then the other. That's called sympodial, canidial production. And notice this one has many segments to it. You can see, you can count them where they've been picked up to stain. And here's another one where you, you can see that it's uh, smooth walled in this case. And you can see that it's multi-septate. And it comes off one side and then the other. This is one that has been associated with causing fungal cytositis. And they found that it's actually in things like marijuana and cocaine. And it gets into the nose. And it causes severe sinusitis. This is bipolaris again, not a very pretty one, but look at the lower right hand side. There's a canidium, and yeah, all those are canidia, but look at that canidia for how it just twists and turns slightly. You can see it's not just smooth, it just goes one way and goes the other, back and forth, back and forth. And those canidia are produced first on one side and then on the other, and then back and forth, back and forth. And this is what bipolaris looks like. And if you put it in distilled water and allow it for to germinate, you'll see that there's the germ tubes coming out at either end and they are parallel to the axis of the kennedy. And that's how you would tell what bipolaris looks like. And here's another example of the germ tube. The next one is one that we don't see very often in the clinical lab, but it sure looks a lot like uh, the one you just saw. It is called Dreschlera. It has kennedy fours that are brown and geniculate, so they go back and forth. There's no prominent hilum on the thing. There's no dark area on it where it connects to the kennedy four. Kennedia are multi-septate. And they may produce germ tubes, but when the germ tube is produced, it's perpendicular to the axis, and it can come from any segment within that spore. So it's totally different than bipolaris. The problem is that it rarely does produce many spores, and so you're not going to see it very often. Here you can see the, an example of Dreschlera, and on the right-hand side, there is the area where the hilum is, where it's dark, where it's connected to the kennedy four. And then it has the canidia for the twist and turns a little bit. And we'll go to the next slide, and this is what it looks like. And the canidia are just this, almost the same as bipolaris when you start to look at it. And here it just looks the same as bipolaris. You see the canidia for in the center there that is twist and turn back and forth. The canidia are produced on either side. So that's what and you would what you would do is you would do the germ tube test on it and you would see that the germ tube is produced perpendicular to the axis of the cell and that the cell the the germ tube can be produced from any cell, not just the the end cells. Well the next one is curvularia, and most of you I'm sure are familiar with curvularia. This is one that produces skidity that are kind of chestnut brown. It's kinda of obvious when the, the colors are very pretty with these. It's curved, it usually has three septations. And it's curved because the center cell grows faster than the other cells. And it causes the thing to kind of curve. So it's asymmetrical when you look at it. And the central cell, where the growth is darker, the two end cells are lighter in color. And if you look at it, it looks like a boomerang. This is there. There it is right here. There are the septations. And notice the, big, the central cell is bigger. It's one that grew, grew more rapidly, and the, and the rest of them stayed about the same size. 
so it's made it curved that's why they call it curvularia you can see here what it looks like it's produced in the same kind of a canidia four that all the others that we talked about are a geniculate canidia four and here you see the cells that the one on the right hand side looks like a boomerang about three o'clock the other cells in there are have been produced on one side and then the other of this twisted and turned canidia four this is just a cluster of canidia. We had one organism here that produced so many canidia you couldn't hardly believe it. This is one field, and what you see in there are the cells that have a large central cell and lighter staining end cells. So this is curvularia. The next one is one that we don't see all that often. It's called X hilum. It produces very large canidia that have a brown pigmentation. They are multiseptate. The canidia have seven to nine septations and the hilum on these protrudes and it's very prominent and it's obvious. This is x hilum and if you see where the arrow is there is a protrusion from the end cell. That is the hilum and they name this x hilum. The hilum protrudes in these cells. None of the others that we talked about has a hilum that does this. It sticks out like that. The others are usually continuous with the cell wall. This is an easy one to recognize because it does have so many cells to it and it has that small protrusion coming in there. By the, right by the arrow you can see the best view of it. And here on this slide you can, you can see on the upper cell you can see the dark protrusion at, at the end. And you can see one where there are two cells together on the right hand side. You notice that the bottom one has a looks like a black peg sticking out there. That's the hilum. So x hilum is one that you don't see all that often. The next one is very pretty, but it's one that's very uncommon. Kind of the rule we talked about in mycology from, uh, from other sessions is if they look really nice and you think you can identify them, you generally can't do it. As a rule. It's too tough. Next one is Helminthosporium. Helminthosporium has canidia fords that are brown and they're erect and rigid and the canidia are kind of round at one end and tapered at the other end and they're multiseptate. And they're produced along the sides of a canidia pore, and they just stay there. And you can see them right here. They all are attached by the swollen, the large end, and the tip of the uh, canidia pore has a, a beak on it. This is Helminthosporium. This is the one you see on the dead leaves that we break outside. There you can see the hilum on each one of these. The dark area is continuous with the cell wall, and it grows on either side of that canidia pore. And sometimes it's, it has a long beak, and sometimes you can see it doesn't. Now we get to something that has been a name change occurring with this organism. It used to be called Phyllophora richardsii, and now it's called Pleurostomophora richardsii. And that's going to confuse some of, of you, but it is an organism that produces phyllids, and phyllids are flask-like structures that produce canidia. In this case, this organism is one that causes phaohyphomycosis fairly commonly. Thick wall brown foliage are produced. The tips are tapered, but on the tip there's a flared area that looks like a saucer that just sits up there. And you may find brown uh, pigmented canidia, and you may find some that aren't pigmented at all. This is a view of Pleurostomophora. The right hand side shows you the, the phyllid, which is the kind of flask like structure. The tip of that looks like a saucer sitting on there. That part where the canidia are produced and they're pushed out and they're kept in a mucilaginous type cluster together. And there you can see the top of those looks like it has a saucer sitting on it. So this is what this organism looks like.